Hey everyone, it's Daniel Brother Bear Barris. So, in response to my previous video, I had Avi Kraparo, hopefully I pronounced that correctly, what about SQL Server and connection to database? And I told him I'd get on it. What he means by that is the SQL integration with MDT. Now, since we already have SQL Express set up for our WSUS server on our MDT, we're just going to add two new instances. Uh, one for each of our deployment shares. I'm going to do one for the MDT, one for the PSD. Okay, so let's get started. So control alt insert, let's log in. There we are. I'm going to right click on our terminal. I'm going to open up Windows PowerShell. And I'm going to give that a few moments to load our VMware tools so that we have copy and paste. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create some additional folders in our E drive, which is our SQL Express drive, where we've already set up uh, our previous WSUS database, and then the PSD ones, okay? So what we can do is we can copy from line 16 up to line 7, right-click, copy, and paste that there. There we go. We're going to leave this window open because we're going to use it again. Now we're going to open up our file explorer. We're going to go to our share and we're going to go down to SQL Express. Okay. And our SQL folder and double click our setup exe. Okay. And it should come up with our new SQL Server standalone installation. There we go. And we're right here, just so you're aware. Click on Use Microsoft Update to check for updates. Next. Give that a moment. We're good there. Don't worry about the firewall. We already set those ports open. Next. We're going to perform a new installation. Next. I accept. Next. Okay, I'm going to uncheck these three boxes here and just leave the database engine services. Our instance root is going to be on the E drive. And we're going to put MDT here. Next. Okay. Give that a moment. Our named instance, we're going to call this MDT, and I'm going to press the tab key. And that way the instance ID fills in. I'll click next. And now what we're going to do is we're going to actually add the SQL Browser service. Now what this does is the SQL Server Browser program runs as a Windows service. It listens for incoming requests for Microsoft SQL Server resources and provides information about the SQL Server instances installed on the computer. Since we're installing additional instances, we want to make sure it provides the instance name and the version number, etc. Browsing a list of available servers, connect to the correct server instance. It does a whole host of things in the background. So we're, let's close that window. And you can see our SQL Server browser is right now set to disabled. We're going to put automatic. Okay. And click next. All right. And now what we're going to do is since our user account is there, we're going to click add. We're going to do SQL admins, check names. That should auto fill in. OK. Go to our data directory. Under user database directory, we're going to click here. We're going to go down to the E drive. And we're going to go to the MDT folder and the database folder. Click OK. For the user database log directory, click here. MDT logs, there we are. Now we're going to click on the temp db tab. We're going to click add and we're going to go down to e mdt temp db folder. We're going to remove this top folder. There we go. And down here on log directory, we're going to choose that logs folder under mdt. Okay. There we are. Now just click next. Give that a moment. And away we go. Once this is done, I'll come back. Okay, we're back. And database engine services succeeded. We're good there. We're going to click close. And now what we're going to do is we're going to open up our 
PowerShell window that we had, and we're going to fix those services. So the SQL browser, we're going to enter it as delayed auto start, and we're going to make sure that upon failure, it tries to restart that service three times, and then we're going to actually start the SQL browser service. So we can copy from 65 up to 62, paste here, and exit. There we are. And now we're going to install our other SQL standalone installation. So just click on New. This is for our PSD deployment. Okay, same thing here. Next, perform a new installation. You can see our MDT and SQL Express are still there. Next, I accept. Next. Same thing, uncheck these three boxes. It's going to be on the E drive, and we're going to put PSD here. Next. We're right here in case you're wondering where we're at. Okay, here we're going to do PSD, press the tab key. Next. Just as before, we're going to add our SQL admins. There we are. Our, we already know that our services are good. We've already got this automatic. Okay, next. Add SQL admins. Check names. Good. Data directories. User database directory. Here. We're going to go to our E drive under PSD and database. There we are. For our logs, it's also PSD logs folder. There we are. Go to the tempdb, add, e, psd, tempdb, okay. Remove this older folder. Log directory, we're going to go down, psd to logs, okay. Next, and I'll wait until that's done. Okay, and that succeeded as well close and we can close SQL installation center okay we're going to go down here to start and we're going to open up our SQL server management studio give that a moment to come up we're right here okay come back when that's at the login screen okay and here we are so what we can do is for server name we're going to highlight here for MDT space and connect okay we're going to right click here properties go to memory we're going to set the minimum to 4 gigs, 4096, and then the maximum to 2 gigs shy of our 8 gigs. All right, 6144. Click OK. We're going to do the same thing for our PSD. So go to File, Disconnect Object Explorer, then File, Connect Object Explorer. And this one is going to be for our other database. So click Connect, right click, Properties. Memory, same thing, 4096 and 6144. Okay, and close SQL Server Management Studio. Now we're going to go to SQL Server Configuration Manager. We're going to go to Protocols for MDT. We're going to double click on Named Pipes. On the drop down, we're going to go Yes, Apply, OK. And OK. And we're going to do the same thing for our PSD, named pipes. Yes, apply, OK, and OK. And the reason we're doing that is in MDT, it's going to ask how we want to connect. We're going to use the named pipes to connect. OK, there we go. Now we're going to click on SQL Server Services. And under MDT, SQL Server MDT, we're going to right click and click Restart. Give that a moment, you'll see it'll stop the service and then restart the service. And this is just so those changes can take effect.
And same thing with our SQL Server PSD. Restart. There we are, stopping. And there we go. We can close SQL Server Configuration Manager. We're going to right click on our terminal, open up Command Prompt. We're going to fix those SQL services so that they're also delayed start, and it will restart their services should they fail. Okay. When our servicing pipe, servicing pipe timeout, which we set to three minutes, expires. Okay. So there we go. Success, 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 success. I center for to exit. Okay, now we're going to install the updates to or cumulative update to our SQL servers. Um, we already have the update installed for our SQL Express installation, which was for our WSS. Now we have to install it for both the MDT and PSD, but don't worry, it's only one time you'll see that it has checkboxes for those installations. Okay, give that a moment. And I'll come back when that's at the screen to start. Okay, we're back. Click I accept. Next, you see MDT and PSD, both checkboxes are checked automatically. Next. Checking files in use. File in use check completed. Next. There we are. And just click upgrade. And once that's done, I'll come back. Okay, and we're back. And both MDT and PSD succeeded. We're good there. We can close this Explorer window. And now we're going to start up our deployment workbench. So start. There we are. We're going to expand our MDT lab deployment share. Okay. We're going to go to advanced configuration, expand that. Under database, we're going to click, then right click, and type new data, or click new database. We're going to type MDT01 for our server name. Our M instance is MDT. Notice there the named pipes. Click Next, create a new database. We're going to call this MDT Lab. There we are. Next. That is our deployment share. Dollar. Okay. Next. Next. And finish. You can see computers, roles, locations, make and model is all there. All right. Now we're going to do the same thing for our PSD lab. So advanced configuration, database, right click, new database. We're gonna type MDT01, our instance is PSD, named pipes, next. To create new database, we'll call this PSD lab, next. Our share is PS deployment, you remember we share. We created that in our last video. Okay. Next, next, and finish. There we are. We're going to close this. Now we're going to do is we're going to open up, reopen up our SQL Server Management Studio. And we're going to change a few things for our database. And I'll be back when that's at the logon screen. Oh, there, there it is. Automatic. Okay. And so we're still on PSD Lab, which is fine. Click Connect. We're going to expand databases. And you'll see our PSD Lab database here. Right click, Properties, Files. For the owner, we're going to change this to the System Admin. Check Names. OK. I'm going to go here to PS Lab, PSD Lab. I'm going to change the file growth to 512. OK. And then I'm going to change the max size of our um, our files to 10240, which is 10 gigs. OK. Go to Options. And remember, we had 
compatibility level, we're going to set that to 2019 as it suggested on the Config Manager page. Okay, so we're going to click OK. I'm going to go to File, Disconnect Object Explorer, and I'm going to File Connect, and this time we're going to go to our MDT Lab database. So paste that there, connect, expand databases, you'll see our MDT Lab database properties, and we're going to do the same thing here. Files, Owner, SA, Check Names, OK, MDT Lab, 512, OK, and 10 gig max size, OK, Options, Compatibility to 2019 or 150, OK, and we can close that. All right, now we're going to go back to our deployment workbench, start, open that up. Okay, here we are. So I'll expand these. Advanced database, you can see both have those there. All right, so what we'll do is we're going to click, then right click on database, first one here. We're going to say configure database rules. We're going to leave these all at default. Next, 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 and finish. We're going to right click on our deployment share, go to properties, under our rules tab, and you're going to see we now have a whole host of priorities here, which is great. And if we go down here past the rules we created, you'll see that there's new ones here. Okay all set up for you. And now we're going to do the same thing for our PSD deployment. So click, then right click database, configure database rules. Next, 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 one more, and finish. Okay. And now we're here. Let's verify our priorities, properties, rules. You can see they're there. And right underneath, you can see that they're all set up for you. Okay. And that's it for this video. We can close this. And I hope that helps. Have a good day, everyone. See you in the next video.